I will speak to you today about the Norwegian hydropower and how we can use this to be the so-called renewable, rechargeable battery for Europe. Before I get there, I will just say some words about the Norwegian hydropower, which is uh, very special because we are using natural lakes as reservoirs, and we have an abundance of natural lakes in Norway. And uh, those lakes, they also serve for large storage volumes. In fact, we can actually store water for several years in some of our reservoirs, and this could be ideal to be used as a rechargeable, renewable battery if we combine this with other renewable sources. The old ways of uh, constructing Norwegian hydropower was using penstocks and power plants, uh, looking like the picture. Uh, however, today uh, we are mainly... Uh, you can hardly see a Norwegian hydropower plant because it's inside the mountain. As tunnels for waters and also the hydropower stations, they are built inside the mountains. So this is the modern design, which has been in place for many, many years, thanks to the good quality of Norwegian uh, rocks and mountains. This was the old way of doing it, uh, which is no longer valid, and I also believe that uh, we should not do it uh, this way with respect to health, safety and environment. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to focus a little bit more on the possibilities for using this hydropower as a renewable battery, that means actually that we can use the uh, uh, storage capacity in Norwegian reservoirs uh, to produce a lot of electricity if the wind farms and solar uh, power plants in Europe is not producing when the wind is not blowing. Uh, we could use from this and we could use that water for many, many days actually. Not only day and night regulation, but for many days. And the other way around, if there is too much wind, because Europe has extensive plans of building wind power and solar power, we could uh, either stop production in Norway and hold back the water in these reservoirs, because we have a big capacity, or we can also use, install so-called pump turbines and pump water back into these reservoirs, acting as a real battery uh, that is recharged with renewable energy, recharged with wind and solar energy from Europe. Uh, and this has been also focus uh, from uh, the European side. For instance, as this picture shows, the German Minister of Economy visiting Norway. There has been many other studies, from, especially from UK and from Germany, that have uh, massive plans of developing more uh, renewable energy. And for them, it will be mostly wind energy, some solar, maybe some others as well. But the drawback of this uh, kind of renewable energy, uh, like wind and solar, is that you cannot really store the energy. You have to produce it when the wind is blowing. So therefore, it's a perfect match to Norwegian hydropower, which can store water, store energy for a long time. This is just a picture to show you how development is going. And EU has set uh, quite uh, ambitious targets of uh, installing more wind and solar power. And this shows just how uh, uh, the wind power development has been in, in Germany. Just look at the, the uh, uh, very steep uh, uh, increase in installed wind capacity. And the same is happening in solar energy, and this will be done in Europe. Europe will develop this. It's on, on a good way to, to reach the targets. Uh, however, if you look at uh, a little bit complicated graph showing one year of uh, simulated wind production in the future, it's a picture from a uh, proposed uh, 100,000 megawatt installed capacity in the North Sea area in 2030. And along the x-axis, you will see uh, one day from 1st of January till 31st of December, simulation of the wind for every hour. And the graph shows that for some periods, lasting about a week, you have high production, and then suddenly within in days or even in hours, the production drops down to almost zero because there is no more wind. And this is the whole North Sea area. So what should we do then? Should we back up this wind by, by using fossil fuels like gas turbines, coal, maybe nuclear? Or could we use Norwegian hydropower to back up this? And vice versa, when the, there is a high production, like in this period, we could either stop producing uh, hydropower in Norway or we can even pump water to a higher level to store energy. But all this, of course, requires a lot of development, and I'll come back to that. But the potential, and I guess some of the speakers following me today will also talk about this, uh, showing that uh, there is a strong need for this kind of 
backup when we are going to utilize wind and solar power. But of course, this will lead to development, and as we have seen, both in Norway and in many countries, nobody really wants to have either wind parks, uh, transmission lines, or any other in their backyard. This is just a picture showing demonstrations from last year's uh, power line debate in uh, Hardanger in Norway. Uh, people uh, don't want this. There are, of course, environmental impacts related to the use of existing reservoirs. We are not talking about building new reservoirs, but we're going to use it in another way if Norway wants to deliver this balancing power. Uh, this will, of course, uh, introduce some additional environmental impacts, even though the system is already uh, affected. There will be maybe more erosion, Probably there will be some other landscape effects uh, that will have impacts on wildlife when things are going to be constructed. We have to build roads, we have to, we have to uh, uh, build maybe some new power transmission lines and so on. Uh, our reservoirs will be drawn down at other times of the year than today, and sometimes also maybe the water level will be constantly higher. But we don't know yet what will be the impact on fish, for instance, from this. These are things that have to be considered and studied. Another important issue in Norway is the uh, ice conditions. Many of our reservoirs are in mountain regions, which is heavily also used for, for outdoor activities like skiing or snowmobiling or whatever. And we don't want anyone to uh, go through that ice, so we have to investigate if we can keep, if the water level in these reservoirs will vary more, if you then can keep uh, safe ice conditions. Uh, <clears throat> also, this might introduce another uh, possible threat that we will uh, uh, cause uh, uh, biodiversity a change by introducing uh, foreign species to a neighbor catchment or to if pump hydropower plants is being used, we can actually then uh, pump uh, both water and organism up to a higher level in the same uh, uh, in the same river system which will again lead to uh, some consequences for biodiversity. This needs to be investigated. One of the major debates in Norway these days are how to enhance our uh, power line system. And I think uh, also using uh, Norway as a green battery for Europe will lead to more power lines, overhead lines. And this will of course have uh, direct ecological consequences and I would like to stress this a little bit more because this uh, public acceptance is one side of the question, which is more related to aesthetics. People don't like to see them. But also animals will, of course, have problems by collision. And by this power line right away, there will be an impact, maybe a barrier effect. But there might be also some positive wildlife impacts, creating new habitats that can be used of some animals. These are things that need to be considered. Today, there is a trading system for energy, which works well in, in Norway and the Nordic region, and also works uh, with connections to the continent. Uh, but of course, uh, if we want to do a massive investment in developing Norwegian hydropower for, for balancing power for Europe, we need a lot more connection lines, to uh, not a lot more cables to uh, the continent and UK, and we would also need to develop the market, because today's trading system is not sufficient. I don't think uh, all the large investment that needs to be done uh, has enough, uh, there is enough possibility to pay back that with today's system. But there is a, a large potential. This has to come through uh, intergovernmental agreements. I think the politicians have to decide if this is something we want to do or not. We also have to think that everybody who is in this business will need to see the benefit. That could be the owner of the reservoir, the owner of the cable, the energy components, companies on both sides, both in Germany, UK and Norway, and of course those who are affected directly, the local communities. But keep in mind, this is not only about markets and benefits, it's also about uh, mitigating climate change. But I don't think we can do that, and several studies have shown this as well, if there is not any economic incentives either. So this has to go in parallel. We have to do the benefit of climate change, but also somebody has to earn money on doing this. In Cedren, the research center uh, we have in combination at, at Sintef, Entenu and Nina, 
we have been looking at the technical potential in a preliminary study to check is this a reality possible. So we have actually gone into the map, looked at uh, sites, and from the map you see on the board now, all the blue things are reservoirs, and all the black lines are existing tunnels and hydropower plants. And what we have done is to check if we can install in parallel, and we have checked a lot of possibilities, and try to calculate if this can be a reality with the design, not really engineering, but a preliminary study, showing that this will fully be possible to develop something around 20,000 megawatts of uh, balancing power in southern Norway without any new reservoirs, without uh, any dramatic change in water level. It's around 10 centimeters per hour as a maximum, we've set as a limit. This could be feasible. Uh, and within something like 2030 or 2035, this could be developed. This will, of course, also lead to a huge business development, uh, both for the energy companies. There has to be a lot of construction done, tunnels, tunneling. Uh, millions of cubic meters of rock has to be excavated, and this will also uh, be, of course, a boost for that tunneling industry. I think, actually, we would need all the capacity in Norway, which today are constructing road tunnels, railway tunnels, and other underground works, to be used for this as well. So we need support from, from abroad. Uh, of course, for equipments, engineering, consultants, and all the other things that follows with large construction work, will there be a market for? So there is a large business development opportunity, which we should not ignore. It should be taken into account. And maybe we could ask, should we do this? Or should we, for instance, develop uh, oil and gas from the Lofoten area, which has been debated in Norway, uh, which is also the reason for doing this, is to enhance business development, to earn money. Or should we maybe instead try to do this on renewable energy? I'll just leave the question for later, but that's uh, one way of looking at. Finally, I would like to stress that uh, this is not only about business development, this is about also replacing carbon intensive energy production. We have uh, um, looked at the possibilities of using this Norwegian hydropower as balancing power, and it will be in, in uh, competition with coal-fired power plants, which nowadays can be turned off and on a little bit faster than before. It will be in competition with gas-fired power plants, especially, where Norway is maybe the main source of delivering gas to Europe. So we have to ask us the question, is this what we really want to do in Norway, to deliver gas, or should we also look at the possibility of using the hydro reservoirs? Uh, I don't think the hydro reservoirs can do it alone, but I think it could be a very good alternative to some of the fossil fuels using our reservoirs, but we have to take care to design them in the way so we, we are sure that the environment is uh, protected in its best ways, by using only existing reservoirs and also looking carefully at where and where not to do this. I think still the potential be, will be very high, and the benefit of using then uh, renewable hydropower to back up the renewable wind and solar power, to make actually the investments in new renewables like solar and hydro really renewable when there is a backup from another renewable source instead of using fossil fuel as a backup. Thank you for your attention.